Hello. This contraption is called a heat engine. What we're going to do is use heat to do some work as in lifting water from this beaker up into the cylinder. We're thereby going to increase potential energy of the water working against gravity and that is going to be done using heat. The technique will be to alternate putting this aluminum canister into hot and cold water simultaneously operating this three-way valve uh, to direct the water to the proper place. The first configuration of the valve is going to be like this. In this configuration, the valve is open to all three outlets so that when I put the canister in the hot water, it will expand the air in the tubes and will blow out any residual moisture that is left over in the lines, like this. That step needs to be done just once at the beginning of the experiment. The next thing we need to do is we'll, we'll put the canister in the cold water, which will draw the water from the beaker up into this tube. Okay. followed by putting the canister in the hot water, which will direct the water from this tube over into here and then into the cylinder. However, for all of that to work, the three-way valve must be in the right location at each time. So timing is critical between the person operating the canister and the person operating the valve. When the canister is in the cold water, the valve needs to be in this configuration to allow water to flow up from the beaker into this tube. Now we'll try to, to demonstrate the experiment actually working. Okay, cold. Okay, hot. Okay, cold. Okay, now hot. Water is attempting to go toward the cylinder a little bit. Okay, a little more. This takes a little bit of patience, but eventually it will be made to work. Again. Okay, trap it up there before it falls back to the beaker. And then hot again. And over the cylinder, more and more and more. Okay, cold. With enough repetitions, we should be able to at least nearly fill up the cylinder. Okay, hot, hot. Mistakes will happen along the way. That's okay. Okay, cold again. Okay, hot again. Okay, cold again. Okay, that's a good one. Okay, now hot. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. Okay, now cold again. Okay, hot. Okay, and cold. Oops, tube has come loose, but we'll try it anyway. Okay, hot. So basically, we repeat this. Yep. Now I've seen students do it much more efficiently, but uh, yeah. you know, okay, cold again. Okay, now hot.
Notice how water can get trapped in the tubes. As long as you don't let it fall back in the beaker, um, you'll eventually get it over into the cylinder. Okay, cold again. The important thing to remember is to cycle through these four different settings of the valve over and over and over again in a good rhythm until you've achieved as much liquid in the graduated cylinder as possible. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, hot. Bang. Okay. One more time. Okay, now hot. Getting closer. Okay, cold. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's try the hot, see what happens. I got water in there. Okay, what we're trying to calculate in this experiment is the power of this engine, also known as the amount of work per time. So we need to start by measuring the height of the water in the beaker prior to running the experiment, like so, which was a little higher of course when the experiment started. And we also need to know how high this shelf is above the, uh, above the bottom of the beaker. And now after we've run the experiment and filled up the cylinder, now we, we're going to measure the height in the beaker one more time, as well as the height of the water in the cylinder. Now, the potential energy is mass times gravity times the change in height. Since the height is changing during the experiment, we will approximate by taking the average of the heights in the beaker before and after and the average of the heights in the cylinder before and after, but we have to take into account also the height of the shelf above the bottom of the beaker because we need a common reference point to calculate potential energy. Okay, for the mass, we just will take the reading of the volume of water in the cylinder. The volume in milliliters will be equal to the mass of the water in grams, after which we need to convert to kilograms. The other measurement we need to make is how much time did it take for the to run the experiment. So we need to know what the time was on the wall clock before we started, and then one more time after we have finished. And finally, to calculate the power of the engine, we just take the mass as determined by the amount in the cylinder, converted to kilograms, times the strength of gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared, times the increase in height on average of this water and then divide by the time it take, took in seconds to do the experiment. Okay, and that will give us the power of our engine in watts. The physics of the experiment is the same as the power of a car engine. Okay, you'll find that the power of this engine is about a billion times less than a typical car engine, but the physics principle is exactly the same, using heat, alternating hot and cold sources, uh, to do work uh, on a system, and that's what we have demonstrated here.